Hello, good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, good evening teacher. teacher. Good evening. Okay, today is the last day of this week, or we can say this is the last week of this session. So we are really glad to be here tonight. I hope that you had a really good day today. And we are going to end this week with some exercise and with some new information. Yesterday, we were talking about the nouns. So I am going to share the screen to um, remember the topic. So give me a second. Okay. This is uh, the information that we were uh, studying yesterday. It is about the nouns, the countable nouns, non-countable nouns, uh, also uh, common nouns. Uh, we were talking about um, also nouns referring to people, um, nouns referring to animals and things. Uh, so we were uh, studying one of the uh, largest uh, word classes in English. So yesterday we uh, did an exercise where we um, identify the nouns in the sentences. This is the exercise that we uh, did yesterday. Uh, today, we are going to end the topic of nouns with another exercise. And then we are going to develop a new one that is the new topic called expressing wishes and desires. The new topic is wishes and desires. We are going to talk about things that we want, things that we wish, and things that we desire. So, we have the exercise, so let me right, right. have this. This exercise is about nouns. We have <clears> just <throat> five sentences in uh, this exercise, but you have to um, find the correct option. We have the number one. It says there are a lot. And we have this space here, people here. And we have these options. We have of, we have any, and we have in. The second one, there were, and we have the space, any bites, in the shop. And we have these options to complete the sentence. Lots, much, no, and not. And the third one, we have the space of people come hiking here. And we have these options. We have must, all, plenty, and we have no. Number four, some, we have the space, are, in the garden. We have these options. Any cats, of cats, a cat, 
and just cuts. And number five, we have the space of a birds drink from our birth bed. And we have the options. Let, let's, let out. Okay, five uh, sentence. And we have some options to fill in the blanks. In the first one, there are a lot of people here. There were any bikes in the shop. Of, of people come hiking here. Some are in the garden. Of birds drink from our birth bed. So for um, answering this uh, sentence, it's uh, about the uh, words that we were studying at the end of the session. There are the expressions of quantity. And we have not any, also we have no, some, a lot of, lots of, plenty, most, and all. So just uh, to remember, because we are going to um, fill the blank with the options. The first one, not any. We have two sentences. The countable one says, there are not any biscuit left. The noun countable, there is not any water in the sink. Then we have the word no. And the countable ex example is, there are no animals in the park. In the non-countable sentence, there is no money in my person. Then we have some, and the countable example is some children play here on the weekend. The non-countable is, there is some smoke coming from that house. A lot of, the countable example was, she has a lot of dogs. The non-countable, there is a lot of traffic today. Lots of, the countable one, lots of women work here. Non-countable, she made us lots of coffee. And we have plenty of, and we have the countable sentence that it says, there are plenty of bottles in the fridge. And the non-countable sentence says, there is plenty of information in the report. Most, the countable one, she keeps most of her books in the shelf. The non-countable, we spend the most time on the project. In all, the countable one, who ate all the apples. And the non-countable, Jennifer is the one with all the experience. So in the first one, the first sentence, there are a lot, what is the oh. answer? Of, oh, oh, good. There are a lot of people here. And yeah, the second a lot of people one, here. Mm -hmm. And the second one, what is the answer? Not. 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 Good. There were not any bikes in the shop. Then we have the number three. What is the answer? Must. 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 Are you sure? Most people. Yes. Most of people. Most mm -hmm. of. Mm -hmm. We are using of. And oh. with the word must, we can't use of. That is not the answer. Maybe all, 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 all of all. people. Plenty. 
Plenty. Plenty of people. Plenty of people. Yes. Number four. Plenty. Some cats. Some cats. cats. Good. Some cats. Some cats are in the garden. And the last and the last one. Lots. 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 A lot lots, of birds. Uh, lots, lots of birds. Good. Lots. That's a bird tree. Mm -hmm. from Teacher, tell me. And um, I have a question. Uh, tell me. When you use must. Must. Yes. In the case of must, we have an example uh, that we uh, uh, did yesterday. We have this uh, sentence. She keep most of her mm -hmm. books in the shelf. Ella mantiene muchos de sus libros en la librera, pero no los tiene todos. Es como la mayoría. And oh, okay. uh, so we were saying that we can use it with uh, some um, words, in this case, with countable nouns, just countable. And with the non-countable, uh, we are going to talk about time. Estamos hablando de la mayoría, no de todo. En most, nosotros lo utilizamos con eh, una gran cantidad, pero no todo lo que tenemos, sino que una cantidad bastante grande. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Tell me. Uh, what is the difference between uh, moss and um, planting. Plenty. The difference yeah. with moss and plenty. Okay. Uh, in this case, uh, we are going to do something here. Moss and we have here plenty. Okay. In this case, plenty. We are going to write it in Spanish. The uh, translate is um it, 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 we are going to say it is abundancia so let's uh have like this but let me let me show you <clears throat> and we have a mouse that we are going to use it to complete something and we can say it that in this case, this word is mayoría. In this case, we have abundancia, algo abundante. And most is cuando hablamos de una cantidad. Uh, for example, I have um, 20 books. I have 20 books. And I want to, um, well, 10 books in a box. I have most of my books on the box. So let me write the example. I have most of my books on a box. And I am going to write the number, 10 books. Tengo la mayoría de mis libros en la caja. No los tengo todos. Y plenty, como estamos diciendo que es abundancia, eh, podemos utilizarlo con eh, cosas que nosotros tengamos eh, como um, en gran cantidad. I have plenty of time, for example. I have, I have plenty of time to do my homework. And we can use this. How many? I have plenty of time. Tengo mucho tiempo. Tengo abundancia de tiempo para hacer mi trabajo. How many? Cuánto tiempo? Maybe 10 hours, maybe two days, maybe a month, maybe a week. En el most, estamos hablando de eh, la mayoría. No estamos hablando de abundancia, sino de la mayoría de cosas que tenemos, pero no en completo. O sea, no, en el caso de los 
20 libros, solo utilizamos 10, que es la mitad. La mayoría de mis libros están en la caja. But not all the books. En la segunda, plenty. Um, I have plenty of time left. Tengo mucho tiempo eh, de sobra. Tengo una abundancia de tiempo de sobra. I have to do my homework. How many? Then, he has plenty of money in the bank. Another sentence. He has plenty money in the bank. Él tiene abundancia de dinero en el banco. Él tiene mucho dinero en el banco. So, uh, it's um, something about the quantity. Siempre hablando de la cantidad. Esto tiene que ver con las cantidades, ¿verdad? So, uh, Bob, uh, Bob uh, I can use on incountable noun. Yes, we can use it in countable and non-countable nouns. Okay. Eh, sí, sí lo podemos utilizar con los dos. There is no problem with the use of most and plenty with countable and non-countable nouns. Teacher, I have a question. Tell me. Um, what is the difference in between um, plenty and uh, too much? Too much. Okay, we yes. have, yes, now we have plenty, that is uh, uh, abundancia, but too much. Es demasiado. Es demasiado. Muchísimo. Uh -huh. I have too much money. Money in the bank. Uh -huh. and my we wallet. I ah. have too much money in my wallet. Uh -huh. In my wallet. Ah. <laughs> That's good. We were thinking the same uh, sentence. Estábamos pensando en la misma oración. Good. I have too much money in my wallet. Tengo demasiado dinero en mi eh, cartera. Es un espacio reducido donde podemos tener dinero. And if we have a plenty of money in my wallet, I think it is not possible because of the storage. Abundante. Ajá, no puedo tener una abundancia de dinero, o sea, no puedo tener demasiado dinero en mi cartera porque no cabe. But if I have too much, maybe $100, $200, $1,000, maybe we can have it in the wallet. But plenty, we can uh, have plenty money in our wallet. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So, Let's continue. We are going to change the topic. Now we are going to talk about wishes. Wishes, which, something that we wish, something that we desire. Deseos. So, mm -hmm, deseos, deseos. Vamos a hablar de los deseos. So the topic is expressing. We are going to express our wishes and desires. So the verb to which, verb to wish. And we are going to use it in present time or tense. <clears throat> Also, past tense to express. And also, we are going to use the, the past tense. Past tense to express, obviously, wishes. So, I have an example here for this topic. I wish I had. I wish I have too much money in my wallet. <laughs> oh, that's a really good wish. And I think all of us want that thing. I have more time to study. I wish I had more time to study. They say, oh, tener o haber tenido más tiempo para estudiar. Deseo haber tenido más tiempo para estudiar. Expressing desires eh, to change 
aspects about our lives and even to express regret about the past and how we might have done things differently. So with this sentence, we can say that we want to express the desire to change aspects about our lives and to express a regret. Eh, nosotros con los wishes, with the verb to wish, we want to express. Queremos expresar um, maybe um, something about our lives that we want to change. Algo que queremos cambiar de nuestra vida o que quisiésemos que hubiera sido diferente. So in this case, maybe it's someone that had a good grades in the exam. Si yo hubiera tenido más tiempo para estudiar, maybe I will get or I will get an A or 10. Si hubiera tenido más tiempo para estudiar, me hubiera sacado buena nota, hubiera salido bien. But it's just a desire, solo un deseo to change something about the past or something in our lives. Or maybe we want to do something differently to change that. So we are going to uh, um, study the uh, formulas that is really important. So we have the first one that, that is which plus plus simple. We have the first one and we have an example. I wish I could spend more time on my hobbies. With my family. <laughs> ah, that, that, that's uh, another one. I wish I could spend more time on my hobbies. I wish, this is the first, I wish, the first part. Then we have the past simple for the span. And we have this a sentence, but the thing with this sentence is this is expressing something in the present. Estamos when, utilizando... me? When I, when I use uh, the wish, is mandatory and change uh, the verb in the past simple? No, we are going to see some uh, structures. This is the first one. We have uh, the past simple, but also we have will, and also we have past perfect, and also we have modal perfect. It is not about the change of the verbs or the change of the time. It's because of the structure. So we have four, and this is the first one. So we are going to see the other three. So in this case, I am using the past simple because I, I want to change something that um, already happened or something that we want to change. In this case, I wish I could spend more time on my hobbies. Algo que esté en el presente. Estoy utilizando el pasado simple, but I am trying to change something in the present. I wish I could spend more time in my hobbies, but I can because of my work. Me gustaría, eh, eh, I mean, me gustaría, eh, in this case, we are not eh, losing. We are just, um, me gustaría pasar más tiempo eh, realizando mis eh, actividades favoritas, pero no puedo por mi trabajo. So, I want to change something in the present. The number two is which plus will the example is. I wish you would I wish you will arrive on time. For meetings.
and it is expressing annoyance. In this case, we can express uh, something like annoyance or when we are uh, angry. In this case, maybe it is uh, something that a uh, boss is a desire or wishing. I wish you would arrive on time for meeting. Me gustaría que llegaras temprano para las reuniones. Y muestra un enojo, un enfado. Number three. Which was past perfect? <coughs> past perfect. And we have this sentence. I wish I had studied more. I wish I had studied more for my final. Exams and it is talking about past because it's already happened. I wish I had a study more for my final exam. And the number four, which plus model model perfect. And the sentence says, I wish I could have a study law at university instead of English. And it is talking about past. But in some cases we can say that it's talking about regrets also, because it's saying that she uh, desires or she wish to uh, have a study law at the university instead of English. Maybe it's something that she really likes. So it can be a regret, not just the past. And we have an expression that we also use to express which. And that expression is if only, si solo. We use a, a lot of that um, a expression in Spanish to, uh, to say something that we uh, wanted. Si solo me hubiera despertado más temprano, si solo me hubiera eh, comido el desayuno, eh, si solo hubiera caminado más rápido. That is another expression to eh, talk about eh, desires. So the expression, if only, this one, if only. And we have an, an example with if only. And we have the same eh, sentence with I wish and if only. The sentence with wish is, I wish I had a new a new company car. And we have the other sentence. That is, if only, If only I had a new company car. It's in fact the same sentence, but in this case, in the first one, I, I am saying, deseo, eh, o yo deseo haber tenido un carro nuevo de la compañía. Y en el otro, si solo hubiera tenido un nuevo carro de la compañía. En uno es un deseo, yo deseo que hubiera tenido. Pero en the second one, si solo lo hubiera tenido, ¿qué hubiera pasado si hubiera tenido el carro? That is not just a desire. If only in wish,
are the same. If only I use uh, the same bar with a null general. In this case, if only and which are the same, but we do not generally use if only. It is not common. In questions, we can we don't use it. And it is a little formal. It is not informal. It is it is a, a, a formal way to say something. And we can use it as a fixed phrase uh, through. Do you wish you had a boat? If only de deseas a, haber tenido un bote, si solo pudiera haber tenido el bote. We can use it like that. And we have some examples. We have some questions. Examples. Number one. Do you wish you could have a cup here in trouble the world? I think in this question, we want a gap year sometimes and know the word or travel the word or just take vacations. So maybe we are thinking about a gap year. And in Spanish, a gap year is um, un año sabático. Number two. Have you ever wish that you could go back in time and change about your life. Number three, did you wish that you were better in sports? When you were a child, Number four, did you use the witch Did you use the witch that you will change schools as a teenager? Number five, do you wish that you had more money? And number six, do you wish that you had more Three time. Okay, we have six questions. Number one, do you wish you could have a gap here and travel the world? Number two, have you ever wished that you could go back in time and change anything about your life? Number three, did you wish that you were better at any sports when you were a child? Number four is the end and I write it wrong. Did you use to which that you could change schools as a teenager? 
Number five, do you wish that you had more money? And number six, do you wish that you had more free time? So based in those questions, you can um, think or you can use two uh, structures of these questions to uh, write your examples. You can do it uh, using uh, those uh, sentences. Why? Because I am going to do an exercise where you can share those um, examples with your classmates or with your partners in this case. Um, so write two sentences or two questions um, using uh, these structures of these questions. And I will give you mm, maybe three or four minutes to write your sentences and then you are going to talk with your partners, but we are going to divide the group. We are going to have some breakup rooms so you can hear your sentence. Van a hacer dos oraciones, dos preguntas usando estas, um, estos ejemplos que están ahí en la pantalla. Van a escribir dos y cuando ya pasen los cuatro minutos donde estén pensando qué oración hacer, Vamos a dividir el grupo para poder practicar. O sea, que todos van a poder decir sus oraciones or your questions. So, you have four minutes to think of your questions and then we are going to divide the groups.
Are you ready? Or need more time? We need more time, teacher, please. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, let's do it. So I am going to stop this and we are going to divide the crew. So let me. Mm -hmm. We have, let me see, 24. So that's good. Okay. Number two, create. Mm -hmm. So you can um, accept the invitation to the breakup rooms. Okay, did you? You have to um, go to the breakout rooms to do the exercise. Evening, Liliana and Liliana De Franco. You have to join the breakout rooms.
did you have the message or you have some problems to enter the breakout rooms? Teacher, sí, what happened? Yo estaba en un grupo y de repente me sacó. Mm. Uh, but you have to go to the room number two. Yes. Let me see. I will move you to room number one. It appears the message. Se desapareció otra vez el message. <laughs> Oh my God, again, I am going to move you to the room number two now. Okay. Yes. Okay. Or sentences or question, yes? And I guess only say, say sentences. Oh, okay. the question, question, only mm -hmm. question. Okay. Um, my questions are, um, number one, do you wish that you have more free time to spend with your family? The okay. second is, have you ever wished that you could go in back time and be a shy. Uh, again, and number three, uh, do you wish you could not work and have the time to travel around the world? That's <laughs> okay. My turn. Um, uh, did you wish to have a player more when you wear a shell? And do you wish you had more followers? Only that. <laughs> um, I will read my questions. I wish I had learned English when I was a teenager. Um, do you wish that you take a bath right now? Do you wish that you have a big family? And uh, did you wish that you, your dog was more friendly? Okay. And me. I had okay. two questions. Number one, had you ever wished that you could go up in the time and say most that you think? Number two, do you wish that you had more free time for your family? It's all. Okay. Other participants. Okay. Did you wish to travel to any country? I can hear you. Um, Miss is the key, the teacher. No. Yes. Yes, I'm okay. here. Okay, Miss, I have a question with Tell the me. with the pronunciation wish because yesterday I did my homework in the platform, so I hear the video. The correct pronunciation is wish or wish. It, it sounds like that. It's a 
a question is something about the, the pronunciation. You know that all of us have different ways to pronounce the words. In some cases, you can uh, hear an A in this in the sound, but it's the way you pronounce the word. Um, remember, we are not native speakers and we are trying to communicate. In this case, the word that you have pronounced, which, which, or we can sound like which, like bruja, it, it's just a way to pronounce which, which is just the pronunciation. Uh, all of us can pronounce the word different. That's, that's no worries. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And I was saying that Roberto is going to participate. So we are waiting for your questions. Did you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we hear you. Did you use the tablet to own the country? And the second, did you wish you could speak another language? Other classmates participate. Me. Hello, good evening. Good evening, Quajer. Okay, first um, is, uh, wait, first is Diana, then is Liliana. So, first Diana, please. Okay. Okay, good night, everyone. Um, do you wish you spoke French? And do you wish to ask any questions? Okay, Liliana, is your turn. Yeah. Okay. Have you ever wish, wish travel around the world? Do you wish that have that you have money and have the most needed children. So we are going to wait for all of us to join the, this meeting. So I want to hear you. How was the exercise? ¿Cómo estuvo el ejercicio? Interesting. Yes. Very Thank good. You. Excellent. Excellent. It was great. It was very good. Teacher, I have a question. Uh, um, the use of do or did is uh, do in question uh, is present, yes? Mm -hmm. In this case, it's present. In past. Okay. So, uh, in this case that we are using the which, you have mm -hmm. uh, the examples do and did, mm -hmm. you can use both of them. In the first oh. one, do you wish you could mm -hmm. have a gap year and travel the world? In la primera oración donde dice, desearías eh, mm -hmm. poder tener un año sabático. Then we have mm -hmm. the number three that it says, did you wish that you were better? Deseaste, we are talking mm -hmm. about the past. And in the first one, we are talking about something in the present. Just that is the difference. Do for something that we want to do in the present and mm -hmm. did for something that we want to change from the past. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're, so you have to ever? To ever. 
Do ever. Have you ever. Have you ever? ¿Alguna uh -huh. vez? Mm, okay. Deseaste. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. ¿Alguna vez deseaste? Ok. Porque en la pregunta número dos, have you ever wished that you could go back in time and change anything about your life? It's something mm -hmm. that we just imagine. Mm -hmm. ¿Alguna vez deseaste ir al pasado y cambiar algo de tu vida? It's something imaginary, not something okay. that we can change. It's something okay. that we wanted to do or just thinking to do. So, um, it's almost time to end the session. And I have something for you. So let me um, open the document and I will I will share the whole document of the classes from Monday to today. But also I am going to send you uh, some exercise. So let me explain something about the exercise because we have two kinds of exercise. We have the exercise of nouns, the topic nouns, and we have an exercise for which. So in the first one, we have uh, the exercise for the topic nouns. We have some practice, practice one, people, places, and things. A noun is the name of a person, place, or thing. Some of the things named by nouns can be seen, some cannot. We have this a table with some examples of nouns for uh, people, places, and things. Then we have the exercise number one. We have a um, 10 uh, sentences and we need to identify the nouns. And we have to mm -hmm. underline the two nouns in each sentence. We did something um, like this yesterday. Ayer hicimos un ejercicio como este donde encontrábamos los las dos nombres de las oraciones. Just mark the sentences, uh, I mean, just mark the nouns in the sentence. We have 10, we have to find two for each sentence. Then we have the exercise number two, using nouns in sentences. In this one, you have to use your imagination. You have to read the sentence and think, oh, this, this word can, um, fill this gap. For example, the number three. In the number three, you have to write a name. My teacher, eh, Sandra, my teacher, Juanita, my teacher, Blanca, my teacher, eh, Stephanie, has redecorated her, and you can say eh, classroom, her eh, notebook, her um, table. You can use your imagination. So, you are going to write the nouns that are missing in those sentences. Then we have the exercise number three, classifying nouns. An example is show for you. Number one, for people, neighbor, the noun neighbor. In the second one, uh, for places, for walk. And number three, thing, suitcase. So you are going to write five nouns um, per, a category. Cinco nombres por categoría, por persona, por lugares y por cosas. And you have to write your five uh, words. And the last one of the topic of nouns is writing application, writing sentence with nouns. Eh, tenemos instrucciones específicas para escribir estas oraciones. Eh, pueden marcar los nombres que utilicen. For the number one, Write a sentence using two nouns that name family members. Van a, van a escribir una oración usando dos nombres que llamen a los miembros de la familia. Just one sentence. Number two, write a sentence using a noun that names a living thing that you can see. Van a escribir una oración usando nombres que llamen a las cosas vivas que ustedes pueden ver. And we have number three, write a sentence using a noun that names an idea you cannot usually see. Write a sentence using a noun that names a non-living thing that you can see. And then we have this one, that's the uh, exercise for this topic, which, and you have to write a, a specific word um, to complete the sentence. 
So I am going to send you this document and you can uh, work in this uh, maybe tomorrow or the weekend or when you have time. And we are going to discuss these exercises on Monday. So you can um, do it to be ready for Monday. So it's time to end the session and thank you for being here these uh, four days. So we are going to see each other on Monday. Have a great uh, weekend and see you on Monday. Thank you, teacher. Good night. 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 Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Happy weekend for teacher. Tell me. I can say you. Um, I wish I'll call no if my sentences is correct before go to the other rooms because I I don't know and es que no siempre estoy segura de cuando he hecho una oración bien. Okay. Entonces, mm -hmm. por ejemplo, me gustaría de que antes de que nos separe en grupos así en, en salas Mm -hmm. no digamos que nos no guiara o nos dijera si las oraciones que hemos hecho son correctas porque por ejemplo las compartimos entre los otros compañeros pero no estamos seguros si están bien elaboradas ¿me entiendes? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, I understand. Uh -huh. Entonces por eso ajá, como como recomendación me gustaría porque por ejemplo a veces uno dice ah entonces así se ha de usar o dice y si como lo hizo él es correcto y como lo hago yo no y entonces a veces entramos en conflictos y empezamos a reproducir un error mm -hmm. de que no estamos seguros. Yes, that's correct. And it's, it's, it's really good to know that you have that, um, that idea. Vamos a tratar de cambiar eso para la siguiente semana y tratar de hacer algunos ejercicios antes para que podamos ver si estamos eh, reproduciendo bien las oraciones. I think it's really good. Thank you for your recommendation. Okay, teacher. Have a good night. You too. Good night. Good night. Bye-bye. Good, 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 good night. Good night. Bye, teacher. Tell me. Ciao, Jacqueline. Can I uh, talk with you for Adio, a few minutes, please? Uh, in private? Um, at the end of, of the class. Or I don't know if is it the, the correct moment. Uh, if you want, uh, send a message to the group in WhatsApp and I will uh, contact you right now. Okay, okay, that's good. Thank you, teacher. Thanks to you. Have a good night. You too. Thanks. Teacher. Tell me. Uh, Tell me. El documento lo va a mandar a WhatsApp. Yes. Okay, okay, teacher. Okay, thank you. Okay, good night. Have a good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.